Let's take a look at the number of lone pairs for NO3 minus. This is the nitrate ion. So here's our Lewis structure for the nitrate ion. And often when we look at molecular geometry, we're interested in how many lone pairs there are and how many atoms are bonded. So if we look at the central atom, that's how we determine the molecular geometry, we don't have any lone pairs. All of these pairs of electrons, they're between atoms. So these electrons between atoms, they're involved in chemical bonds. So that central nitrogen, zero lone pairs. If we looked at the oxygen atoms, we could see that we have one, two, three lone pairs here. And then over on this one with the double bond, we only have two lone pairs. They don't really influence molecular geometry, though. Let's take a quick look at the molecular geometry for NO3 minus. So we can consider the purple, that'll be our central nitrogen. Let's add one, two of these oxygen atoms. They spread out, and then the double bonded oxygen there, and that spreads out as well. So we end up with what's considered to be a trigonal planar molecular geometry. We can see it's all in one plane, and there aren't any lone pairs here. If we did have a lone pair, you can see the effect. It would force everything down. Lone pairs occupy space, and they push the other atoms away. But for the nitrate ion, NO3 minus, there are no lone pairs. We have this trigonal planar molecular geometry. The bond angle between the atoms, 120 degrees. Back to our Lewis structure. So to recap, the lone pairs on the central atom, they do have an influence on molecular geometry. But for the nitrate ion, all of these electrons here between atoms, these are involved in chemical bonds. So we have zero lone pairs. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.